it's my privilege now to present the host of the 27th Army Science Conference, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology, the Honorable Malcolm Ross O'Neill. Dr. O'Neill became the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology in March of 2010. In this position, he serves as the Acquisition Executive, the Senior Procurement Executive, the Advisor to the Secretary of the Army, and the Army's Senior Research and Development uh, Official. He also has had personal principal responsibilities for the uh, department in all matters related to logistics. Prior to this position, he served as chairman of the board on Army Science and Technology, the BAST, uh, for, and for the National Academies and the National Research Council. He also has worked in industry at Lockheed Martin Corporation, vice president, and the chief technical officer there. And probably, I would say most importantly, He's a veteran of 34 years of active military service. He retired as Lieutenant General in the United States Army following a highly decorated career. Dr. O'Neill is going to speak to us on soldiers as the decisive edge. Let's welcome him again. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, before, before I start, hey, yeah, you don't have to say good morning. I, you've already said good morning. Uh, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Marcellus Shepard uh, for his uh, job as MC. Uh, outstanding, uh, outstanding uh, job. Also, uh, Staff Sergeant Jeremy Cady, who sang the uh, national anthem. That's about the best national anthem uh, singing I've heard. And I'd like to, all of us to give him a, a round of applause. I want to uh, thank especially the uh, soldiers who are here today, officers and enlisted, especially uh, Sergeant Major uh, Ritter, uh, Sergeant Major uh, Mellinger, uh, and I also want to acknowledge the, uh, the wounded warriors who are here and tell them that uh, uh, I was in Vietnam and I saw a number of uh, soldiers uh, hit. In Vietnam, it was usually uh, bullets. And one of my closest friends uh, was within a foot of me and was hit in the neck. And they carried him away. Uh, I was with him about a month and a half later. He came back and he was hit twice in the chest. He was about a kilometer over on my left when he was hit. Uh, he came back, uh, made Brigadier General in the Army. He was a West Pointer, class of 1963. And I just want to tell uh, all of you uh, wounded warriors out there that it ain't over. It ain't over till it's over. You can do anything you want to do. Uh, the country owes you a lot, but you owe yourself to be all you can be, uh, whether you're 18 years old or 38 years old. And I just challenge all of you. You've, you've come a long way. You've made it so far. You're still alive. You have people who love you. Uh, the American people love you, and they'll do anything for you. And I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, this is a new uh, organization we have in, uh, in the Army. Uh, I've hired Marilyn Freeman. I, I don't know whether you've gotten the impression yet, but Marilyn will not let grass grow under her feet. She is a visionary. She is tough as nails, but she's fair. I've also hired for the first time in probably 25 years an Army Chief Scientist and Dr. Uh, Scott Fish from University of Texas. Uh, I have hired as my principal deputy Heidi Hsu from Raytheon Corporation. She has two master's degrees and recently she was the chairperson of the Air Force Scientific Advisory Board. I served with her for four years on the Air Force Scientific Advisory Board. Uh, I have a PhD in atomic physics and have been in Army R&D for probably 20 years. Was at DARPA, Maryland was at DARPA before that. So as far as the technical expertise in the management of, uh, of science and technology in the Defense Department, the Army is now the strongest of the services and is more highly qualified than DDR&E in terms of its scientific uh, 
expertise. So don't worry about getting into details with us, please. Uh, we are ready, we are able, and we're highly motivated to get into the technologies and the science involved with ground, uh, ground combat. The uh, subject of my talk today is soldiers as a decisive edge. When I, when I got into this job, they said, we want to make the Army strong. And my response was, the Army is already strong. The question is, how strong do we need to be? And I thought about it for a while, and I said, the word that comes to my mind is decisive. And what made me think of that was when I was at Lockheed Martin, we were designing and then we built the F-22 fighter plane. The F-22, with all of its accoutrements, is about $200 million that we wrap around an Air Force fighter pilot. And that Air Force fighter pilot can destroy any airplane on Earth without that airplane ever seeing the F-22. It has a, the most capable radar. It has a significantly more capable air-to-air -air missile. Uh, it is stealthy, so the other, the other pilot can't even, he doesn't even know he's in a fight before he is, uh, he is taken out. I call that a decisive weapon. Uh, I've been on a, a nuclear attack submarine, the USS Phoenix. And we went out and we maneuvered against a, I was a guest, of course, I'm not a naval person. I was a guest on the, uh, on the Phoenix, and we went out and we maneuvered in the Bahamas Trench against a surface fleet. Well, we sank every ship in the fleet probably four or five times, simulated, of course. But we had to, we had to approach the ship, not be seen or heard, uh, simulate a torpedo launch, and then egress. We did it for about three days. We sunk probably the whole Imperial Japanese fleet equivalent. They never saw us, never heard us. And at least in my own mind, that was a decisive weapon. The M1 tank on the Army side is decisive. There's no question about the M1's ability to take the, uh, take the enemy tank under fire and probably 95 percent of the time prevail. And then I thought of my comrades in Vietnam, uh, my uh, uncle who was in World War II, my brother who was in Korea, and the soldiers who f have fought the, we the uh, wars since. And the funny thing is when you break the horizon, come across the ridge line, the only difference you see is the helmet is a different shape. And now we wear body armor. In Vietnam, you, you could either wear body armor or carry more bullets. And in my recon unit, we were in a recon unit, we all decided we'd rather carry additional rounds of ammunition than protect ourselves. We wanted to be proactive, not reactive. And uh, I think it was stupid because we lost, uh, we lost a, lot of, uh, a lot of soldiers. But that was the, that was the scenario. It, it, it doesn't look a hell of a lot different today. And what I'm going to try to do during the time I'm, uh, I'm in my job is to try to make the soldier a decisive weapon on the battlefield, to give the U.S. soldier, the dismounted soldier, I'm not talking about the soldier who's in a, in a tank or the soldier who's in an Apache helicopter. I'm talking about the soldier on the ground who is the one right now who is closing with the enemy. And I think Marilyn already mentioned that. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Let me run through this fairly straightforward uh, set of view graphs. Next, please. Next chart. Thank you. Uh, this is the vision of the assault. The thing that I have done is I've highlighted the part of my vision that is most important, and that is providing soldiers a decisive edge and I think when our soldiers have a, device of a decisive edge, then we'll win the nation's wars. Because as I see it in the future, because of the way the Air Force and the Navy dominate and the way we dominate in a mid to full scale engagement, 
the kinds of wars we are going to be having for the near future, at least, are the kinds of wars where soldiers play the play, soldiers and marines, of course, play the predominant role. Next view graph. Uh, we, uh, of course, are responsible for science and technology, development of hardware, sustainment of the hardware. Uh, that's our job. And we need all of you, of course, to help us. One of the things that I want to I emphasize is the fact that we, we are all on a team. And you can think of yourself as a tackle, as a third baseman, as a, a wing on a, soccer, on a soccer field, part of the scrum in a rugby match. Uh, we, have to, we have to understand each other, respect each other, and treat each other as members of a team. And you, as a member of the team, have to pull your share of the load. Marilyn can't carry it all. She, she, she needs you. I need you. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have some role to play in making the Army a success. So we expect you to do your job, and we'll try to do our job. Next, you, Graf. Uh, 